A magnet is fun. It can attract things. A magnet attracts paper clips. Does it attract other things? Here are things to experiment with. A magnet attracts scissors made of steel and nails made of iron. Steel and iron are metals. But the magnet does not attract this metal penny made of copper, nor this metal dime which contains silver, nor a metal ring made of gold, nor this metal foil of aluminum. So a magnet attracts steel and iron, but it does not attract these other metals. What about things which are not metal? The magnet does not attract rubber, or glass, or leather, or wood. So a magnet does not attract non-metal things. Later you might experiment with other things to see which things a magnet does not attract and which things it does. Let's go back to the paper clips made of steel. If we hold a paper clip near the magnet, we can feel the pull of the magnet. This pull is a kind of force. We call it magnetic force. The magnetic force can attract the paper clip even some distance from the magnet. So the force must go out from the magnet. How far does it go? We cannot see the magnetic force, but we can show that it does reach out beyond the magnet. We'll use a piece of glass and some iron filings, tiny bits of iron. We sprinkle the filings on the glass. The magnetic force pulls the iron filings into a pattern around the magnet. The pattern shows us that the force does go out around the magnet. All this space into which the magnetic force goes out is called the magnetic field. When steel thumbtacks are brought into the field, they are also attracted through the glass. Will magnetic force attract through other materials? Let's see. Let's tie this steel wrench to the table. When it is brought into the magnetic field, it is held up in the air. Now let's pass some things between the magnet and the wrench to see if the magnetic force will go through them. The force passes through a rubber band, a wooden pencil, a plastic ruler. It passes through any material which is not iron or steel. So far we've been using horseshoe magnets. But the horseshoe magnet is only one kind of magnet. There's also the U-shaped magnet and the rod-shaped magnet. There's the magnet shaped like a button. and the bar magnet. Is this steel needle a magnet? No, it does not attract the paper clips. Let's see if we can make a magnet of this steel needle. What happens when we stroke the needle with the bar magnet? After about 40 or 50 strokes in one direction, let's try the needle again. Now the needle is magnetized. It is a magnet. You can try making your own magnet, stroking a piece of steel or iron with another magnet. Most magnets are made of steel. The bar magnet we've been using is an Elnico magnet. It is made up of several metals. It is many times stronger than an ordinary steel magnet. Here we are putting the bar magnet into a liquid, glycerin. Remember how we used the piece of glass to show the magnetic field? This time the liquid will help us see the field in a somewhat different way. We use iron filings again and sprinkle them into the liquid. As the bits of iron sink, the magnetic force pulls them into a pattern. No 
Notice that most of the iron filings are attracted to the ends of the magnet. The ends are the most powerful parts of the magnet and are called the poles. The poles of a magnet are often marked with letters. The N stands for north and the S is for south. When a south pole is brought close to a north pole, the north and south poles attract each other. South and north are unlike poles. Unlike poles attract. When two north poles are brought close together, they push away or repel each other. If the two south poles are brought together, they also repel each other. So if poles are unlike, they attract. If they are alike, they repel. And the magnets do not have to touch each other in order to attract or repel. The bar magnet hung from a string can turn very easily. We'll let the magnet turn freely. If we wait a few minutes, we'll find that the poles always point in the same direction. One pole points to the north and the other to the south. That's why they're labeled N and S. How can we use the poles of a magnet? We'll take the needle we magnetized and put it on a piece of floating cork. If we wait a few moments until it stops turning, we see that the south pole of the bar magnet attracts this end of the needle. So this must be the north pole of the needle. Now we have found the north pole of a magnetized needle. It points towards the north. In much the same way, we can use the magnetized needle or pointer in a compass. The needle always points north and south. Now let's line up the dial. We make sure that the north pole of the compass pointer lines up with north on the compass dial. Now we can read all the directions. The compass dial is pointing north, just as the pointer is. So the opposite direction is south. To the right is east, to the left is west. So finding directions is one important way we use a magnet. You can find magnets being used all around you. On this clipboard, the magnetized pencil is attracted to the steel clip. The potholder is attracted to the steel cabinet because the potholder has a little magnet inside the cloth. On this steel bulletin board, little button magnets hold pieces of paper. The magnetized screwdriver can attract and hold the steel screw. This very large and powerful magnet can lift heavy pieces of scrap iron and steel. Here it is lifting parts of automobiles and a bed spring. This is a special type of magnet. It uses electricity and it is called an electromagnet. As you learn more about magnets and magnetism, you'll learn about electromagnets too. Let's remember what we've learned about all magnets. Magnets attract steel and iron things. The force of a magnet is called magnetic force. The magnetic force reaches out into the space around a magnet. This space is called the magnetic field. When iron or steel comes into the magnetic field, it is attracted. The attraction is strongest at the ends of the magnet the poles. All magnets have poles. Unlike poles attract. Like poles push away or repel. When a magnet is free to turn, its poles always point in the same direction, north and south. There are different kinds of magnets. And we can even make our own. Magnets are fun to experiment with. Magnets are useful. They can be used in a compass. 
they can pick up things. Perhaps there are some experiments you would like to try to find out more about magnets and about what they can do.